All right, come on in, fill in, all the way on the walls if you need to. All right, this session we got Joe Partlow. He's been involved with InfoSec in some capacity or role for over 15 years, mostly on a defensive side, uh, but always fascinated by offense. In this talk today, he will go over some helpful methods and items used to quickly acquire digital evidence and share some open source automation scripts we use on a regular basis to assist in the acquisition process. All right, thanks guys. Um, there's a couple of seats over here if some of you guys want to fill in. All right, so yeah, this is, uh, you know, this talk is really just uh, some areas that we found um, just in our kind of day-to-day -day that, that I really found lacking. Um, not that there's not a, a ton of good information out there, but really what we've found is that it's, um, you know, research has kind of stopped and then start, you know, started and then stopped or uh, people have kind of you know, began an idea but really didn't end. Um, so this is kind of a, you know, hopefully some some ideas to continue that research on. So, you know, who am I? Um, you know, like I said, I've been in the security for a while, mostly uh, on the defense side. Um, there's a whole bunch of letters and stuff I have, but I won't bore you with that. But really, I'm just interested in, interested in forensics. Um, so really, that's what it comes down to is, you know, how can we make this stuff uh, easier? better. Um, I realize sometimes it's a little bit of a dry subject, uh, but, you know, it's, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the offense stuff is probably more sexy, uh, but, but really this is, you know, the last talk, they brought, he, he brought up a good point that, you know, day to day, really, you know, that's, this is what happens. So we don't all get to do pen tests every day, uh, but this usually happens every day. So what is live acquisition? So, you know, as uh, you know, bad news Brian, you know, <laughs> he says, you know, it, it's really the, the process of pulling the, the forensic artifacts from a running machine. Um, and, you know, the old school thought was, you know, first pull the plug out, that's the first thing you're supposed to do, and do your disk image. You know, that's, that's been dead for, for a few years now. And, you know, if, if you do that, you're going to miss a lot of uh, good information. Um, you know, that being the sole method has, has been gone for a while, but I'm just surprised how often we, we still run into that mindset. Um, not to say that you, we, we, you know, disk forensics is dead or we shouldn't do it, but we should definitely, uh, you know, there's going to be times where we want to get the live information first. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, let's get that first. Then if we have time or if we we're able to, let's, you know, image the drive. So, yeah, you don't want to, uh, you know, waste your time imaging and miss a lot of stuff. All right. So why is it important? You know, what, what type of stuff, uh, you know, can we get from that? So, you know, active network connections, you know, that's, that's probably one of the biggest ones. Um, you know, if this thing is actively communicating out on a botnet or uh, there's uh, an attacker that's on the machine, you want to make sure that you're able to, to see that. And if you yank that plug out and do your disk image, you're going to miss it. Um, so let, let's try to get that first. Memory resident stuff, that's huge. Um, you know, I would, I, would, I would argue that probably the memory resident stuff or the memory forensics is probably the most important area of forensics right now. Um, you know, so much of that stuff just sits in memory. Uh, a lot of it doesn't even write to disk. So, um, you know, making sure that you, that you get that first um, is, is, is absolutely key. Uh, same thing with currently logged on users. So if there is a malicious user or unauthorized user on that machine, you want to make sure that you can see that uh, before you just yank the plug, shut it down. Um, they may not come back up. And then same with running services. If there is something that's running in the background, it may not be a, a Windows service that's installed, but some sort of running process. You want to make sure that you get that again before you shut it down. So you know, what, when, when, when won't uh, traditional disk images work? Um, you know, if it's, if it's something that uh, you, know, you go in, you try to acquire the machine, you shut it down, you know, first thing you do is you want to try to image it and pull it up in a VM. You know, there's, there's some attacks in malware that are, you know, VM aware. So that may not work well uh, because the, the, the malware may not start up. It may recognize that it's in a VM. Uh, there's some great tools to, to try to do that, uh, you know, Cuckoo being one of them. Um, but to try to bring that in, that, that try to hide that, the fact that they're in a VM uh, instance. But that's, that's a big one. You know, some of the advanced stuff, it's, uh, it's not going to show up or not fire back up. Um, location aware. So if, uh, 
yeah, me as a, a, a malware writer, I may know that your headquarters is in a certain locale. I, um, you know, I, I code my, my, my piece of uh, my binary specifically for that. If I see, okay, now I'm coming from a different IP block um, or I'm coming from a you know, different type of machine or different uh, you know, geographic location, maybe it won't pop up from there. So it's kind of another advanced thing, but something we want to be aware of. Uh, you may not have time to image the whole drive. Uh, you know, obviously there's, you know, storage is cheap now. And, you know, we really, really regularly run into images that are a terabyte or more. So, you know, if it's, uh, uh, you know, a couple, couple I, you know, things I have on there, if it's a, you know, smash and grab where you've got to go in, you've got to just acquire what you can and then you got to get out. Uh, you know, if we're, you're on the offensive side and you're doing kind of a black bag job, you know, some of our three letter agency friends, they may do some of this stuff. It's quick, it's in, it, don't, it doesn't have time, you know, hours to do, time to sit there and wait for the image to fire up. So you want to try to get as much as you can, as quick as you can. Memory is going to be the key thing for that. You know, that's, that's, you know, if you only can grab one thing, at least you can take that back. Usually it will dump pretty fast and analyze that, where if you don't have time to do disk um, for that. But that's kind of the whole point of this, this talk, is what, what other types of things can we do very, very fast to uh, pull that information off so that if we have a limited amount of time or resources, uh, we have the most information possible for when we take it back to our forensic station. So just kind of recapping, you know, what are the different types of methods of acquisition that we can do? Um, you know, you've got your traditional disk or drive base. You know, that's, that's kind of where it all started, and that's, that's you know, goes back decades, really. And that's, uh, you know, doing a bit-for-bit -bit copy of the hard drive. Um, you know, any, really anything that's, that's on the hard drive, you're going to take an image of it, you're going to bring it back to your lab, you're going to mount it read-only, um, you know, or if it's a, a VM image, maybe you're going to try to mount it that way and look at it. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it, it's valuable, but there's, there's some other things. Uh, the memory, like I said, huge. Um, you know, especially when stuff is running in memory, uh, active connections, active processes, getting that dump so that you can bring it back and analyze it. Uh, volatility, great tool. Got to give those guys a plug. Um, you know, that's, that's something that, uh, you know, is, is, is going to save you a lot of time. And you're going to find a lot of stuff in there versus, uh, you know, just looking on the disk. Uh, running system safe. So, you know, what are the things that are, are, are happening? So, services, processes, uh, network connections, logged on users, we kind of talked about that already, but you know, that's, that's kind of a specific area. Maybe you just want to grab that information. Uh, it gives you some insight on you know, what's, what's that machine doing, what's it participating in, uh, who's on it. Um, and then you've got the virtual machine, which I think this is kind of a cool new area where you know, obviously you know, I haven't been in one environment where they're not probably at least you know, a third or more virtual at this point. So you know, that's a cool thing, I think, coming up. Uh, some more research that I know I'm interested in as well is you know, grabbing that machine image, whether it's a snapshot or you know, the, the actual image that's stored as a, as a backup or something. Um, you know, what can we get off of that? You know, especially if it's paused, then you're going to get a lot of cool stuff where you've got um, you know, kind of a, a frozen snapshot of that state. You might have memory still in there that's, that's being used, uh, services. Um, you know, basically, it's, uh, it's, it's getting it all at that point. So, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm bashing on traditional forensics or disk forensics, but, you know, the same rules apply for live acquisitions. Um, you still have to minimize touching the disk or memory. You don't want to trash the evidence, basically. Um, you know, whether that's scripts that you're running on the machine, and, and that's kind of the old school thought is that you're not supposed to run anything. Um, you do want to run that on the lab, or like I said, there's times where you may need to to do that. So minimize the amount of stuff that you're doing off of that. Have your stuff on an uh, external disk. Um, you know, try to, minim you know, try to uh, you know, minimize the amount of, um, obviously you don't want to install anything on the machine. Uh, yeah, that's the next one. So, you know, don't install any programs on the victim machine. Any standalone binaries that you would need, make sure that you have those ready to go. Uh, you can run them from removable storage if you need to. Um, preferably not stored on the disk that you're analyzing. Again, you want to make sure that that's as uh, clean as possible. Um, you know, another big one is uh, ensure repeatable results um, or, or methods. Uh, there may be a time where you've got to go to court to defend yourself um, or defend your actions in a case. You want to make sure that, you know, the same way that you would image a drive and do chain of custody and all that good stuff, you want to make sure that you do the same thing here. Uh, if there is a question, you know, the first thing that you're going to get hit with is, well, you were on the machine or you ran this script or you did that. So 
Um, you want to make sure that you know you, you're you're using sound forensic techniques. You're you're doing stuff by the book. You're still documenting everything that you need to do, um, and that you're using uh, you know stuff that uh, you know the defendant or the other party could reproduce if they had to on that image. Um, again, another one: document all actions and script. So. Anything you do, make sure you document that because you're going to get called out on it. Uh, make sure that it's, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of out in the open. You're not trying to hide anything. This is still, uh, you know, something that you need to to make sure that you're, you know, not hiding or, or being open about. Um, hash any files. So if if there is an instance where you want to copy files off of there, maybe you can't pull a full drive image, but there is some certain files that you want to, get, and we'll get into those later. Um, again, make sure you hash those so that. There's never a question of, oh, is this really the file that was on that machine versus the one that defendant or prosecutor is looking at to match up. So you still want to do that, same as if you would hash kind of the drive image uh, along the same lines. Um, and then, you know, obviously analyze and disk image. Um, at the end of the day, you're still going to want to do that. If you've gathered all your live info that you can and you do have the time or resources to get a, uh, a full disk image, um, continue on with that. Um, it's still a valuable uh, thing that you need to do. Still a lot of good info on there. Um, you know, a lot of the advanced stuff, though, really doesn't touch a disk anymore. So you got to make sure that you do both. All right. So when does it go wrong? Um, <laughs> I can, uh, I'll relay a story, and this is not meant to make, you know, any kind of organization look bad. But a few years ago, um, at a previous life, I was an IT director for a software company down in South Florida. And come back from lunch one time, and there's full, uh, you know, SWAT police in our lobby of our office. So it was a pretty wild crew. So it wasn't a, a, sh a shock why, they, you know, that they were there. It was more why are they there. So we've had, um, you know, unbeknownst to us, there was a, a person in our call center that uh, was on probation for, let's just say he had an underage girlfriend and took some inappropriate pictures. So he was on uh, probation for that. And part of that condition was that there was uh, surprise visits by uh, the Broward County Sheriff's Department and, and others that would come to our, you know, his place of work or uh, his house to make sure that, and they would do periodic uh, image grabs and make sure they, they, you know, he didn't have these images still on, on his computer or his work computer. Well, uh, you know, me being interested in forensics, I was like, great, you know, these guys got all the cool tools, they, you know, they've got, uh, you know, FBI tools with them, you know, I, let me, I want to hang out and see what these guys are doing. So. Go over there and, uh, you know, it was, it was a machine out in the call center, so you can imagine there's, you know, 100 people or so out there. Uh, they go out to, to, to grab the machine, and of course that's, you know, you've got, you know, armed guys in there with three forensic guys. It's going to cause some disruption in the, in the office. So I'm watching them do it, go through, and they put the disk in and start running commands, or trying to run commands. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, that's, that's probably not the best <laughs> forensic practice to do something like that. And then I realized it's, it's a live CD. And you know, I kind of pulled one of the, the uh, investigators aside and said, look, you know, uh, that seems to be a, a, a live Linux CD. This is a Windows box. You know, you, you're, you're, you know, you're trying to run live you know, Linux commands off of that. It's, it's not going to work. So after you know, multiple times of putting the CD in, trying to run commands, rebooting the machine but missing the, uh, the, the CD boot um, instance, you know, now this thing has been bounced three or four times, and I'm just thinking, whatever evidence you were going to get is probably going to get thrown out regardless at this point. So eventually they got the CD up and running, you know, got into the, the little Linux boot uh, uh, menu, tried to, um, you know, basically they had a pre-canned script that would go out, search the image, or search the hard drive for any images that it found, suck all the images down to a USB stick. Well, couldn't figure out how to mount the USB stick in Linux. So, you know, they're, they're the second fail at that point. So they're, they're, they're trying to mount this thing, couldn't get it working. Um, and at one point I said, look, you guys, you've already bounced the machine, so it's not, an, it's not a, a worry about, you know, t downing it. How about we take the machine, I'll put it in the back room. Uh, you know, you can work a little bit better. It's not chaos out here with the call center. They didn't want to do that. Um, and then, you know, what, what it came down to is about a, a half an hour of them trying this thing. They ended up walking out with nothing. Uh, you know, they couldn't get any of the tools to work. No script would, would write to the USB because they couldn't get that. And, you know, ha you know, most of the way through, I look over and, and, and the kid that's, you know, his, his workstation's being analyzed, he's over here texting like crazy. So I'm thinking, all right, 
you know, they were, they were going to his house afterwards, so he's probably telling his roommate to, you know, trash all the computers or hide them or whatever. So, I, you know, nobody was watching this kid, even though there's probably five of them there all focused around trying to get the machine. So, you know, why is that a fail? You know, the three big things I took out of that is, you know, learn the tools that, that you're doing. Don't let that be the first time that you're trying to run scripts or, you know, use your acquisition tool. Doesn't matter if you're doing a disk image or anything, practice first. Um, you, know, you, you don't want to you don't want to struggle with that and and end up trashing the evidence and then watch your surroundings uh, you know if like I said the the uh, the guy was sitting back there texting everything so I wouldn't be surprised if they you know when they took him home they didn't find anything at his house either so kind of a lesson again not to not to bash these guys but it's just a common theme that that we see is that um, you know people don't practice this stuff so what type of stuff should we get when we do the uh, live acquisition? Um, you know, obviously there's a, there's a ton of different things going on. Obviously it depends on the OS, what we want to do. You know, this is kind of specific to, to Windows, but obviously you have uh, Linux machines and various other OSs. So the big thing is, is the memory dump. You know, try to get that first uh, just so that you're not, uh, you know, remember anything that you do, any commands that you do, anything like that is going to alter that memory a little bit. So try to get that dump first out of the way. Uh, there's tools that will dump that very, very fast. Um, you know, dump it is one that comes to mind. I did a you know four gig of memory in a couple minutes. Um, it's it's pretty quick. Um, and then the disk dump. You know, if if you have the time and the resources uh, to try to get that, get that first too. So that if you are going to run scripts or um, you know mount USBs on that live uh, uh, system, that at least you've got kind of those two static things out of the way. Again, you may not have time to do that. Uh, system config. You want to make sure, you know, what are the network settings? What are the open shares? What's the, uh, what drives are attached to this thing? Uh, what local users, uh, any installed applications? When's the time, last time this thing was patched? So try to get all that information as well. It'll help you go back when you take this information back to your lab to really try to get a timeline together, figure out, all right, well, yeah, we found this and realize it hasn't been patched in, since this date, so it's probably this vulnerability. So, you know, again, the goal of this is to not do the analysis right then and there. It's get everything we can as fast as we can, as thorough as we can, do the analysis later. Uh, network connections, and that, again, another, another huge one. Um, some of the stuff that's obviously uh, connecting back, if it's a botnet, it's foaming home. Uh, you wanna make sure what's, get a good list of those, what it's listening on. Uh, the startup info, you know, obviously this is kind of an old school way of, uh, you know, attacking the machine or getting a foothold is, you know, when it first boots up or if Windows first starts running, you're gonna run a set of scripts or service or something like that. So, you know, old school, but it still is something that you wanna grab. Um, whether that's reg keys, startup programs, whatever it is, get all that stuff. Uh, the running processes and services. Obviously you wanna grab that, not just the stuff that's official Windows service, but stuff that's, uh, you know, just running as a process. Stuff that's been spawned off from another process. Get all that things. Uh, the schedule tasks, obviously another good one, maybe something set to kick off at a certain time in the middle of the night and then shut down. If you're doing your acquisition pool at noon, maybe you don't see that when it's running right now. So look at schedule tasks, see if there's something that might kick off later. Uh, the cookies and browser cache, uh, this is one that we see a lot where uh, the, the infected files are in the cache. So if you, can, if you can get through those, look through them, look at the timeline, sometimes that will help. Um, Analyzing those, a lot of times there's downloaded internet files that might be the initial uh, method of infection. Look at those, um, a lot of times we see them in the cache. Obviously any USB devices that were, that were used. Um, you know, if somebody did plug in something to uh, exfiltrate data or, um, you know, copy tools from, anything like that, grab a list of those things so that you can then go back and match and say, hey, you know, was this, uh, you know, an authorized uh, serial number or an authorized device. If not, all right, we may need to we need to may need to have the employee come back and we grab the information off that as well. Event logs. Um, yeah, obviously, that's it's one of the most important things. Nobody likes dealing with event logs. Yeah, they're, they're they they uh, hard to go through. There's a ton of them. It's hard to manage them. Uh, but but at the end of the day, that's that's. Hopefully where everything's go. Obviously not everything is gonna to log to event logs, but it helps piece together a timeline. And if you, especially if you see some gaps, uh, that would be a good one. So obviously stuff like clearing of events, time changes on the system, logging failures, uh, any privileged use, 
application crashes, any of that may be hints to when, uh, when and how that machine was compromised so that you can piece together your timeline. Um, any one of these things is probably not going to be a silver bullet for you. You're going to want to look at all these things, put them all together, um, see how they fit. Some of them may be uh, totally unrelated, but um, you know, some of them may have hints that can help you with uh, other parts of the investigation. So what are some advanced stuff that, that we, we should get? Um, you know, what drivers are actually loaded? We, you know, what were the uh, you know, last 50 DLLs that were created? If something is spawning off other processes, this is extremely helpful to say, all right, well, you know, what, what, what actually was loaded up? What are, we, what are we doing on here? We talked briefly about kind of the downloaded executable files. Another huge one, because most of the time, you know, most infections are going to come from you know, some sort of uh, uh, you know, browser type infection. Somebody browsed a site they shouldn't have, clicked on a link they shouldn't have in the email, downloaded files. Um, so anything from the browser, that's going to be a good one. Uh, the DNS cache. Um, you know, I've heard a couple talks today where, where people are, are talking more about DNS. This is an area that's, you know, for the most part, has been neglected. Um, you know, the, the, the guys that are in, and people that have been in forensics for a while know that this is kind of a, a gold mine, if you will. But I see still this, you know, we do a lot of sim work uh, as well, and that's one of the huge areas that, that is usually missing uh, from most people as far as bringing in logs, uh, analyzing, is the DNS cache. It's not easy. Um, and there's a lot of data, so that makes it hard to do. But you know, that's, that's really going to be your initial indication of, is this thing connecting to something that it shouldn't? Um, you know, or is it trying to? Um, a lot of times what we'll see is uh, you know, the whole uh, employee laptop or something that comes onto the, the, the network. Maybe their you know, kids or whoever were using it at home for something questionable, bring it on the network. Now it's trying to phone home from the network. So you want to see if that's, that's happening. Uh, shell bags. So this is kind of a, you know, I won't say it's it's unknown, but it's it's not as well known as some of the other things. Um, you know, it's it's again not a not a silver bullet to see what's going on, but you know, there's a set of registry values for for how the GUI is has been used, uh, window position, things like that. So if you ever get a case of, yeah, you know, was this employee looking at things they shouldn't have, unauthorized files? Um, this makes it a little bit easier to prove that yes, they were browsing that that directory, or they were, uh, you know, opening this viewer to look at these things. Um, reg keys, uh, you know, there's a ton of them out there. Uh, shell commands, obviously a good one. Any browser helper objects, things like that. So, you know, obviously there, there's a there's a ton of those, um, and it's we have a, a good list, and I'll, I'll kind of show you guys here in a second uh, some reg keys that we look at on a normal basis, but. That's um, yeah, that's that's one of those things that it's 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 real time suck to go through the registry and they're hidden anywhere. So um, we'll get into some methods that we can kind of help with that later. Uh, interesting files. So you know, as part of this, what we want to get is looking at prefetch files, compressed files, encrypted files, um, alternate data streams, um, files with no extension. So a lot of times when you look at uh, you know, malware that, that, malware that we find on, on PCs, it's, you know, something with no extension, you know, some, you know, hidden files, things like that. So any of those files are going to be helpful to copy off. Again, if you have the disk image, great. If you do not, um, try to at least pull those types of things. Um, Prefetch is going to help you because it's going to show you, uh, you know, what was ran, what was loaded. Um, and then same with the other ones, obviously ADS, another old school attack, but you know, still, still a pretty slick way to hide things. Um, so pull those files as well. And then, uh, you know, live packet capture. This is kind of a, I won't say it's controversial, but it's definitely been helpful for things that, um, you know, if we were able to get this on some investigations that we've had, um, again, kind of goes back to, you know, that's the, uh, it's frowned upon to touch the machine and do anything on the machine. But sometimes, you know what, we don't care. You know, we want to just really see what's going on with the machine. We have no concern about taking this thing to court. We're not going to image the drive. We just want to know who's it communicating. Shut it off, whether we're going to create a uh, IDS rule, firewall rule, or something. All, we did, you know, all the customer wants to do is just shut the, the, the traffic down. They really don't, they're going to blow away the machine anyway, uh, re-image it. So live packet capture might be pretty cool to catch um, you know, to see just you know, what's happening. Is it you know, somebody doing something slick tunneling under DN, you know, through DNS? Are they using uh, some sort of random port that they shouldn't be? Um, you'll see all that there where you, it may not be as obvious if you're just looking at 
open network connections. Okay. So, you know, on the box, um, again, this is a situation where if we are, you know, maybe directed to say, hey, you know, we know we're going to blow away the machine. This is not going to go to court. All we want to do is, is find out what the piece of malware was that got on the machine so that we can, you know, either add that to our, our scanner or add, create an IOC for it or something like that. Um, here's where you can do some targeted searches. So, you know, something that, that would be helpful would be, you know, obviously files created in the last X days or a particular date. So if you have a, a machine that's been compromised, you know the date roughly that it happened, you know, let's just put all the files that were created. Yeah, you're going to get some stuff that probably, uh, you know, is legit, but, um, you know, more times than not, if they haven't done any time manipulation, which is a caveat you got to worry about, um, a lot of times we see that they don't. Um, you know, attackers are sloppy as well. Advanced attacks, yeah, they're going to trash the timestamps and it's going to be hard to find. But a lot of times we get lucky and, and you still, they don't, they don't care. They just, uh, you know, it's, it's scripted, it's automated, they're not worrying about that, they're just dropping files. Um, and same with files are owned by a particular user um, or, or modified in the last minute of days. So, you know, if a person has visited a questionable site, downloaded some files, you know, let's just pull everything that was owned. You know, especially if this was a, um, uh, a shared machine or a machine in a call center or something like that where you've got a lot of people that are using the same machine, you may want to know, hey, we found this piece of uh, uh, malware on it. Who was the user kind of logged in when this happened? All right, now let's kind of go pull the rest of their stuff as well. Gives us a, a little bit of an indication on what we should look at. You know, when you've got a terabyte drive full of files, where do you start? So some of those are a couple of things that, that we usually start with. Um, IOCs. So, you know, this is kind of one of those things that um, it's been around for a few years. Uh, there's, there's been a few good talks on, on IOCs. I uh, encourage you guys to kind of do some research into this. And this is kind of an attempt really for, uh, you know, forensic investigators to say, hey, you know, we found this piece of malware. How can we help see where else this might be? So, um, again, these things will live in uh, memory. Um, it can be found on the disk. So think about this as kind of a known set of artifacts that you might be looking for. Uh, it could be a reg key. could be, uh, uh, like I said, a, a, a file somewhere. could be a, an IP address. So there's a lot of different artifacts, and I'll kind of go through some of them uh, here in a minute. Um, but, you know, search for that. Do a, do an IOC scan. And there's a few tools out there. Uh, Mandiant's got Redline, which is kind of a free, free one that they put out there that helps. Um, but there's some ways that you can do this kind of on your own as well. So again, really just IOCs, just to kind of give a recap. Like I said, it's, it's, I see this gaining more traction. It's a pretty cool idea. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, are, are contributing to this. Uh, IOC Bucket's a great site. So if you want to get some of these, they're, um, I should have put the link in there, sorry. Um, but it's a, a site where people contribute to that, and there's a few hundred of them up there now. Um, again, pull those down, do your scans against it. Uh, very interesting to see what these things are going after. Um, you know, again, typical IOCs, buyer signatures, IP addresses, uh, could be file hashes, um, could be URLs or, or IPs that are, uh, you know, that, that there might be something connecting to. Um, and uh, some of the examples that I have there are, there's a, there's a few flavors. Um, you know, kind of open IOC is probably, I guess, one of the biggest ones. Uh, but Yara, Cybox, Styx, um, it's, it's, it's all comes down to the same thing. Hey, what's a, what's a common framework that us as, you know, forensic investigator, investigators or malware reversers uh, or, you know, how can we kind of share that information for what we find so that it can help others that we're looking for? All right, so what does that look like? Here's a, let me get a sample here. And I've severely uh, snipped this here so it doesn't uh, take up the whole thing. And I apologize here. Let me see if I can make this font bigger. Oops. All right. Text Wrangler is not playing nice on the on the on the uh, expansion, but uh, hopefully you guys can see that. But what it, what it is is it's really just a uh, it's an XML file at the end of the day. Um, there's a description about it. In this case, it's the uh, Atembolt APT backdoor. Um, standard description of that, who the author was, when it came out, um, and if you look down in the definitions, that's your indicators. So you can nest these things. Uh, it could be this file and this file and this registry key. 
or it could be, hey, we've seen this file or this file and this IP address. So you can mix and match these things. Like I said, I've severely snipped this down. Some of them are this size. Some of them are, are much, much longer. Depends on the, uh, the actual uh, uh, malware that, it, that it's using. So you can see stuff like here. So you know, this would be a MD5 hash. So if you've got FireEye or something like that that has a list of these that you may be getting fed in or you've done your own analysis, you can scan for this and look for that. Um, it could be a file name somewhere. So Java SVC EXE, you could search for that and say, hey, if I see this somewhere, I know that's a pretty good indication that I've, I've maybe have this backdoor on there. Um, DNS. So this, may, this thing looks like it phones home to uh, this IP address and this DNS. So let's look at our active network connections. Or if we pull our memory dump, we see stuff that's going out to those things. Again, comes back to let's make sure that you're getting those DNS logs so you can bounce it against them. Um, or reg keys. So, you know, in this case, this is, a, you know, the classic run uh, key. Maybe that's hiding something in there. So, like I said, very, very small sample. I tried to snip out, um, you know, the redundant ones. But just to give you an idea of what the IOC is, what type of stuff that you can look for uh, um, on that, that acquired either memory dump or disk image or if you're going to scan it real time. Okay. So obviously that's a lot, um, and, and really kind of when I sat back and said, man, how do we, you know, there's, there's, there's tons of things that we want to get. How can we automate this? How can we, you know, have the one ring to rule them all or whatever? Um, you know, kind of what came to my mind first was, you know, let's do it in PowerShell. Um, you know, it's, it's cheap. It's installed on every machine, and, you know, the equivalent would be, you know, bash on uh, Linux boxes. There are some caveats, which I'll get into here in a second, um, but when... You know, there's some great tools out there that would do live acquisition. Encase, uh, Resolution One, I mean, there's, there's a whole list of very expensive, very good tools that would do this. In my experience, though, um, either the, the, the budget doesn't allow for something that expensive, or even if you have that, I, I can tell you almost without fail that it is not deployed out on the entire uh, enterprise. Maybe they've got it on key servers, maybe it's not fully deployed yet, um, but there's always some time where all right, let's acquire it. We have in case enterprise. Great. Sorry, it's not on that machine. Now you don't want to go install it then. It's kind of too late if you got to put this agent on there after the fact. So, you know, what's a, you know, I try to think of what's a, what's a quick way to do this. And, you know, there, there are some other PowerShell scripts out there. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's, like I said, there are, there is some caveats though. So, you know, Attempting this automation, uh, the first question I always get is, why not do it in Python or Ruby or whatever the, the, the programming language is? Um, you don't want to install programs, and that includes compiler. Uh, sure, you can do a standalone, you know, Python executable, but if you have to modify that on the fly, it makes that very hard to do. Um, you know, if, if you've got it honed down where you've got a specific instance and you can do that, that may be an option. Uh, but it's, um, you know, PowerShell is good integration, kind of all the Windows functions. I haven't, you know, there's most of the stuff that you can do in one, you can do in the other. So it's, it's really not a, uh, you know, a hardcore preference, but it's, you know, PowerShell's there. It's easy. Now, where you run into this is if you have old machines that do not have it, uh, pre-XP or, or even XP, some of the later versions, um, it was an option. So, you know, that would be one caveat is, is if you're dealing with old or you have those old machines in your uh, environment, you may want to go a different route. Um, like I said, there's, there's a lot of good outdated scripts out there to do this. Uh, there, there's a, a bunch of projects that I saw in researching kind of this talk. Um, smarter guys than me, better PowerShell coders than me for sure that have done this. But the problem is it, it, it seemed to a lot of times stop. You know, some, it was a project someone was interested in, halted development on it. Or a lot of times they maybe pulled it in-house. Uh, you know, they, they went to work for somewhere that they said, hey, we don't, really don't want to disclose anymore. Here's kind of the, the starter. Um, but we're not going to put any of the good stuff in or continue updating it. Um, you know, there's, there's really no kind of common framework to do this, um, at least in the open source kind of standpoint. A lot of this is, you know, you know, the offensive guys have done a good job with this, with Set or Metasploit is kind of having a, uh, you know, a, a prepackaged framework, if you will, to do a particular set of functions. From the forensic side, um, you know, there's some distros that will do that for sure, um, but to have something to do the live acquisition um, I found it just, it, there wasn't a lot to, uh, there wasn't a lot out there. 
a lot of scattered scripts here or there, but nothing kind of pulling it all together and, and continuously updated. Um, so one of the big to-dos that I came across when I started doing this is uh, the analysis script. So now that you've got all this stuff, now what? Um, again, it's usually a variety of 20 different tools that you may run for specific uh, conditions. So, you know, that's something that I thought would be cool too, is let's automate that as well. You know, what's, you know, most of the time you're going to run the same common set of switches, same search strings, things like that. That all that can be scripted. You don't have to type that in every time. Um, you know, and the goal, like I said, is to automate this task. You're, you're, you're never going to actually replace the actual forensic analysis work. Um, you know, the, the goal of this is to let's automate what we can, let's let's streamline it as much as we can, and the rest, you know, maybe we got to manually pull it. Maybe there's some other things we have to do. Um, you know, especially like uh, you know values or, or gathered files, keys, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that stuff we could script out, and especially if we're, we're coupling that with IOCs. We know where it is. We know what we're looking for. You don't have to type that out. You, again, you may not have the time. If it's if it's a certain case where you've got to go in, do your acquisition, and leave, uh, maybe it's a hostile situation. Uh, you know, maybe it's it's something where uh, time is of the essence. Uh, you want to have that. You don't want to be typing those things out. Um, and then the option to copy the files off as well. Maybe you want to list it. Maybe you do want to pull those files off to a uh, some sort of removable storage or something for later analysis. So. Um, you know, that's something that uh, I'm kind of going through on, and I'll show you the script here in a minute, where um, really just having the option to do one or both or some combination thereof. Uh, you know, the, the thing we talked about earlier as far as documentation, uh, making sure that everything is repeatable. If you have to go to court for this, show exactly the steps you did. The start transcript commandlet is great for that because it will do that for you. So, um, you know, even if you're scripting this stuff on your own, Sure, you can kind of write out to your file the time and, and, and you know, start time, end time of all the commandlets that you're running. Uh, but the start, trans, start transcript does that for you. So cool little commandlet uh, that, that will uh, save you some time. Um, and then a Linux version. Um, you know, the majority of the acquisitions that we do are Windows, uh, but we certainly run across some Linux stuff. So you know, I think it'd be cool to do that too. can do that with a bash, uh, bash scripting as well. A little more, you know, as far as the caveats go, um, you know, you probably want to use trusted binaries more so uh, on the Linux version. Um, you, know, you don't want to trust your your um, your shell necessarily on a compromised machine, but it's easier to do that on a Linux box if you need to replace it. Okay, so what are some of the big caveats? Uh, you know, obviously, anytime we're, we're messing with a live system, there's some things you got to worry about. Anytime we're depending on native you know, Windows programs or native Linux programs, things like that. There's some things you got to worry about. So API calls, you know, could be inaccurate if, if the box was rooted. So if there is a rootkit on it, it's going to return back what the rootkit says. So you got to be aware of that. Um, you know, a lot of times that's, obviously that's always a concern in the back of our minds, but, you know, most of the times for the, the stuff that we're doing um, on a regular basis, it's, it's just not rooted. It's, it's malware that's on there. Uh, a lot of times we don't have to worry about it. The customer doesn't isn't concerned about it. There's a pretty good indication it's not a rootkit, but still a caveat to worry about. So if you think it might be possible, or you think uh, you just want to be safe about it, you know, check it. You know, run Gmer rootkit remover, Sophos, Malwarebytes. I mean, there's a ton of them out there. Um, you know, you could run that on there too if you need to. Uh, you can also pull from raw memory or raw disk versus the Win API. Um, the caveat with this, PowerShell will do this, and there's some scripts out there that do that. The problem is, um, you know, if you have to prove that method in a court of law, sometimes a script that you wrote is going to be scrutinized a lot more than, uh, you know, something like volatility or, or, you know, some of the other various tools, uh, you know, dump it or whatever, um, that have been used on numerous court cases. So you've got kind of, uh, you know, proven methods versus something that you coded. You're just going to be, you know, not that it's wrong, but you're going to be, uh, you know, held up a lot uh, to more scrutiny. Uh, make sure you output this stuff. So if, if you are copying the files off or uh, you are copying a, a list of things that you found, output it to remote file share or USB, netcat it off to some other uh, location. You don't want to put that stuff on the drive that you're <laughs> trying to analyze. It's just going to mess things up and obviously be called into question on your sound forensic uh, uh, you know, practices if you're doing something like that. So make sure you do that. Ben, back to the story you know, earlier, make sure that you tested that and it works depending on what OS you're working with. Um, yeah, there, there's, you know, 
like I said, the helper programs, you know, there's some that you're probably going to want to depend on versus doing it raw. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, just include that. Um, I call them out in the shell, and I'll, I'll kind of show you real quick for that. Um, and then we talked about the Linux version. Make sure you use the trusted binaries for that. Uh, all right, so let me, um, I'll kind of show you real quick what this looks like. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll put this up, and I apologize for the, the small font and, and you know, this thing's over 500 lines, so I won't read every line to you, but I kind of want to just walk through the method to my madness, and, you know, by all means, you know, I'm going to, it's not up on GitHub yet, but I want to polish it up with this, and I'll put it up there, but anyone that would like a copy of this, either to play, scrutinize, uh, like I said, I'm no superstar PowerShell programmer, but if they are, I'm always looking to help. <laughs> um, so just to walk through this real quick, what it does is, uh, you know, there's a menu that will do a bunch of different things. So, you know, obviously you can run a memory dump, you can do the live snapshot items, you can do the startup items, uh, browser items, register keys, file items. Those are the things like ADS, uh, encrypted files, things like that. Uh, event logs, uh, kind of auto snag. I stole this idea from the, the old autopone, um, DB autopone from Metasploit. You know, let's just launch it all, do it all at once. IOC search, so if you've got IOCs that you can load in, you can feed this in and it will scan it. Um, and then get all files from X date or X user. Uh, that includes this hive here if you want to do shell bag analysis, things like that. Um, or if you want to dump network traffic. So again, uh, you don't want to install WinPCAP on this to do this. Uh, so there's a, a Windows version of TCP dump that does not require that. Um, and you can do that way if you wanted to say, hey, let me run this thing for an hour and see what it's communicating with. Or maybe I run it for a day, and you know, if it's phoning home at you know, 3 in the morning every day, I'll be able to catch that. Um, or dump the entire disk. You, know, you could always do your traditional uh, you know, disk image off of that. Um, so each one of those was kind of broken into functions. So uh, you know, the goal is that you can kind of, like I said, it's, it's kind of like a framework where you can say, hey, I only want to grab the memory dump, or I only want to grab this set of info. It just calls that individual function, or you can do it all. Uh, the memory dump, you know, obviously you can just call dump it and it'll pop up and walk you through that. Um, pulling the system configuration data, so things like, uh, you know, user accounts, current login information, network configuration, any open shares, map drives, uh, you know, really go through and kind of pull all these things. Um, IP addresses that are on the NIC could be helpful. Uh, environmental variables, that's always a, a good one to get. Um, you know, if you want to copy the host file, that's helpful. Um, we had a case where recently where uh, the malware, for whatever reason, was trying to overwrite um, a host file, but it didn't realize it was smart enough to ar it already did it. So there was, you know, a million lines in there of the same thing every time it tried to go out and write to the host file. Um, startup info, uh, you know, this is really just startup applications, uh, running things, running processes. Um, browser information, so DNS cache, uh, DNS failed resolutions, temporary internet files for like the last five days. You can tweak that to whatever you want. Cookies, uh, pull it this way. Any typed URLs. Uh, that way you could say, you know, hey, you, you did go to, um, you know, I, I know nobody knows what RedTube is in here, but if you guys saw recently that they had to compromise where uh, the site was infected, anyone that went to it uh, pretty much, uh, you know, was probably compromised. So, you know, oh, I didn't type that that URL in my browser, well, yeah. Uh, registry keys, like I said, there's a whole bunch of good ones out here. You know, these are just some ones that, uh, you know, off the top of my head we put in there. Um, I won't walk through all those. Uh, IE extensions, a lot of them in there. Uh, file system info, you know, shadow copy stuff, encrypted files, compressed files. Um, you know, interesting files, you could say, hey, pull out everything with an extension of I don't know, VBS or 7Z or whatever you want. Um, you can just give it a list of file extensions and it will rip through that pretty quick. Uh, files with data streams. Um, again, classic, oldie buddy goodie, but you know, let's, let's go through and pull all those files, grab all the streams out of it where it's not the data stream, which is the typical, you know, that's your real data. Everything else is going to be uh, um, stuff that's been added. Files with no extension. Um, you know, that's, that's a, a good one that you see a lot with malware. Um, and then event logs, you know, there's a million of them in there that you could do for process execution, application crashes. Um, 
you know, IOC search, like I said, you could, you know, if you fed this a list of file locations, just rip through the disk real quick and find them, see if they're there. If they are, you get a quick hit, hey, it's a good probability that it's infected by this. Um, and then, you know, like I said, starting an ND data files, that just grabs them all there. Same with user owned, grabbing those there. Um, the net dump, um, you know, you could run the Windows version of TCP dump, grab that stuff, maybe run it for an hour, day, whatever, might be helpful. Um, you know, your DCF, uh, LDD, classic, just disk image. Um, so, yeah, 506. You don't want to type that every time you go out and do acquisition. Maybe you don't want to do all of it, but every one of those things might be helpful if you're, you're uh, working on a case. So let me jump back over to here. Um, so what's next? I mean, obviously we, we you know, got all this stuff. Uh, you know, what, what do we do with it now? So obviously you're going to bring that back and work on it on your forensic workstation. Like I said, if you only had, uh, you know, a half an hour to pull everything you could off the machine, what's the most that you can get? All right, let's go back and analyze it later. So uh, again, volatility, huge, huge, you know, awesome tool for that. Um, check out the plugins page. There's a lot of cool stuff out there. And chances are, if you're looking for something, somebody's probably already done it. If you need something, there's somebody probably already did it. Uh, search you through the registry hives. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you know, SBAG is a, uh, a tool that you could use that will automate that. So when you pull this back in the forensic station, obviously you can, you can have a lot more flexibility with third-party tools, things like that, to where you don't have to worry about running these on the machine. It's on your forensic station, so you can get a lot more creative uh, with that. Uh, you know, network connection. So if you've got a list of, oops, if you've got a list of, uh, you know, bad IPs that you've pulled either through IOCs or active network connections, bounce it against those OSN feeds. You know, uh, you know malwaredomains.com is a great one. I think there's like 40,000 IPs in that thing. Um, you know, there's probably a good 30 or 40 out there that are uh, updated on a regular basis. You know, bounce it against that. Uh, it's a pretty good indication if you see that, that something's phoning home that it shouldn't. Uh, the SQLite databases, this is kind of one of my favorite ones. So, uh, you know, iTunes backups, uh, things like that. A lot of good stuff in there. Um, you know, if you've got uh, uh, a victim machine or something that, uh, or uh, uh, a machine that, that you believe has been compromised or, or don't know if it has, you know, see if they've hooked their phone up to it. Um, you know, maybe it was a stolen laptop or something like that and somebody tried to sync their iPhone to it. If they did, you can grab the SQLite database, look at all the, the lists of their calls, uh, anything that we would have backed up in there, that's a good one to grab. Um, and then, you know, you obviously run the classic strings against any binaries that you've pulled down. Um, you know, again, like I said, it's, 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 this is not meant to replace by any means kind of traditional forensics. It's let's add to our, our arsenal. And, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, people have been doing for years is running strings against binaries, things like that, uh, ADS files. Um. All right. So I know that was a fire hose of info. <laughs> um, <laughs> any questions? Um, I'll have some time we could kind of go through. Um, like I said, open to definitely suggestions, things that you guys have used that, that would be helpful. Um, yeah, first one. Yeah, so um, that was uh, a whole weekend of me pulling my hair out because what I found real quick, especially with the open IOC stuff and Yara stuff, the XML, at first I thought, oh, I'll, I'll pull it in on the fly, uh, parse the XML via PowerShell, look at it dynamically. Huge mistake because a lot of times those uh, indicators are not nested at the same level. PowerShell did not play nice with that. So what I did was, um, it's, it's not there, but I can, I can certainly kind of share my, my trials and tribulations was, I ended up bringing that thing into SQL. Once I got it in a table, there was a whole bunch of T-SQL that went into kind of parsing out the actual value. Um, only just because of my, my failure as a PowerShell programmer, um, I'm a little bit better on the SQL side where I could pull that in, parse out the actual value that I want, and then export it into a CSV. So the end result is that you have a CSV of registry key or registry value, and file name and what the description is, and then you just feed it in and search it through it, and then it would spit out a hit of, hey, we found, uh, you know, Zeus and this indicator. Um, so yeah, that, that was something I struggled with, and uh, I didn't find really an elegant solution for it. Um, I'm sure there's probably a better one than that, but. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that, like I said, there, there's there's a lot of other things that that you could do, and that's a great one, uh, you know, to to look for. Um, you know, one of the other crazy ideas I had was, you know, let's let's kind of, you know, look at the headers, uh, you know, from a hex standpoint to see, you know, hey, is this something that's malicious? And that kind of goes into the the unknown binaries that you might find or stuff with no extension. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a great suggestion. Questions back. Yeah, and I, I did I did gloss over that, but there is a section in there where we'll pull the audit policy so you can kind of see that. But that's a great point because you've got multiple levels of auditing that may be happening. So to know that, you know, you might be wasting your time pulling the local, whereas that stuff might be in the uh, uh, domain controller active directory or uh, event logs. So yeah, great point. Questions? Anybody else have one? In front? Um, I think they're going to put all the slides up on the B-Sides site. Um, we'll do a better job than we did last year on that. Um, <laughs> I, I think we're still trying to find all the videos and slides to put them on the archive site. But um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get with Derek, and, and I'm pretty sure that he wanted to do that this year and, and continue to do that with. And that goes for everything, the photos, everything. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll put the slides up there. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I still have the mystery USB drive that supposedly has some stuff on there, but I, I don't know. We'll see if we can pull some off. But, but yeah, just short answer is yes. We'll we'll try to get that up on the site. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, it's that's something I plan to put up on GitHub. Um, like I said, if if you guys want a copy of it now, I I hope to polish it up a little bit more first. Um, I don't really like the way it's outputting the HTML report. It just looks nasty. So I'm going to clean that up. But, but by all means, if, if you know, come up, give me a card or something, I'll send you kind of what we have now um, before then. Um, and again, you know, if, if someone wants to work on it, got some ideas on what we can add, yeah, I'm, I'm open for that too. Any other questions? All right, thanks.